Hey guys, I just want to say first, congratulations and good luck on your new journey to about uh, six or seven people who passed their NCLEX the last few weeks and texted my phone and a few emailed me thanking me for having all the NCLEX content online, the video, the online review, online course and all of that. And I want to say you're very, very welcome. Good luck and God bless in the, the new exciting journey. And for those who are planning on taking their NCLEX exam for the first time or third or fourth try, know that you guys are almost there. I guarantee you with all my heart and soul that you are very close in succeeding your goal. Very, very close. And, and, and this is my passion and I love doing this. And I'll be with you guys every step of the way. Okay? And if you want to reach me, even just to say hi or ask me any questions um, just go to uh, all nursing notes all nursing notes dot com and all my information my my phone number which you can text me and my email address which you can email me anytime any time of the day will be there now I have mentioned before that pharmacology plays a big role and a big factor with the NCLEX exam now, if we encounter the mid-level questions, which are basically the competent questions, which is exactly what we need to know and what the NCSBN or the Board of Nursing wants us to answer correctly in order to pass the NCLEX exam, then it is expected from us that we understand the management and the prioritization aspects of certain medications that we have to know for the NCLEX. That simply means that we need to know and understand the side effects or adverse reactions for certain medications and also how management and prioritization would be applied towards pharmacology in correlation to the impact the side effects or adverse reactions towards our patient. What, what it means is basically as a nurse or as a nurse graduate taking the NCLEX exam, it is our job and duty to be conscious, always conscious and aware of certain side effects and how that impacts our client. But not only that, but also implications that we need to know for certain medications such as, let's say, interactions or interventions that will become a priority for us as the nurse in taking care of the, of the patient. Now, this entails knowing the specific factors such as ABGs, vital signs, and lab values, and also the symptomatic signs, right? Now, let's look at a few important examples of, of the most important pharmacological categories of medications that we will most likely encounter in the NCLEX exam. And for today's lecture, we're going to talk about and we're going to review um, cardiac medications. Now, let's begin with the, one of the most important medications that is used for hypertension or treating hypertension, and that is diuretics. So let's talk about diuretics. Um, obviously, it helps get rid of sodium and fluid in the body, right? And it, it, it is used to lower the blood pressure and therefore promotes the excretion of sodium and water. Now, with this in mind, we can understand that diuretics interferes with the patient's blood pressure, which means it can significantly, significantly drop, right, as a result. And this can be due to the fact that also there's a decrease in the preload and afterload in the body. Okay, now therefore, a priority for us as the nurse would be giving IV fluids to that patient. Now let's go ahead and go over a specific type of diuretics. And let's start with potassium sparing diuretic. Now with a potassium sparing diuretic, it basically promotes the excretion of sodium and water or well, the retention of potassium. And that is very important to know for the NCLEX, right? And that's obvious. And it is usually used to treat patients with hypertension and edema and also patients with hypokalemia or hypokalemic symptoms, right? Now an example of a potassium sparing diuretic that you would that would be very common in the NCLEX exam is spironolactone, okay? So what is the prioritization for this particular patient? Obviously the patient could end up having too much potassium in the system and we call that hyperkalemia, right? So therefore we would have to know the symptoms of hyperkalemia. Now, we all know that potassium is needed for cells, especially nerve cells, nerve and muscle cells, right, to function for the body to function properly. So as a result, 
of hyperkalemia or having too much potassium, the person can have symptoms that can include irregular heartbeat, nervousness, right, tingling in the hands, even shortness of breath and nausea and vomiting. Now let's talk about another category of cardiovascular medications, which is beta adrenergic blockers or beta blockers. And basically beta blockers helps lower our blood pressure and pulse rate, right, in the patient. It can also be used to treat headaches, glaucoma, and prevent MI or myocardial infarction. And it does this by blocking the sympathetic motor response of the body. Now, always try to remember that the beta blocker medications would usually end in syllables LOL, right? And the common beta blockers that you can encounter in the NCLEX can include metropolol, carvedilol, and acibutolol. Okay? Now, what beta blockers does is it blocks the action of the catecholamines in the body such as epinephrine right or what we call adrenaline and as we all know this causes the fight or flight response of the body therefore the opposite effect can be manifested as the adverse reaction right so side effects for the patient taking beta blockers can include orthostatic hypotension bradycardia nausea and vomiting and diarrhea now we need to know that some of the symptoms of a patient taking beta blockers can mask the signs of hypoglycemia. Therefore the, it, it is manifested as hypoglycemic symptoms. And this is due to the fact that beta blockers can stimulate the hepatic glycogen breakdown in the pancreas. And this causes the, the release of glucagon. And we need to understand that to do well in the NCLEX. Now, Nursing interventions for clients taking beta blockers would include interventions such as making sure that we monitor the client's blood pressure and heart rate. We also need to monitor the clients for signs of edema, right? So as the nurse, we should assess the lung sounds for signs of rails and ronchi, which can, which can be due to fluid overload, right? When we have a patient that is taking beta blockers, we also need to take note that it is very important that we monitor the changes in lab values, specifically protein, BUN, and creatinine, because this can help indicate nephrotic syndrome in the kidneys, and that can be a problem, right? So nursing teaching for these patients would include teaching the client to rise slowly because of the cause of, obviously, orthostatic hypotension, like we mentioned before, and that can become a safety issue. And we also need to tell the patient to report any signs of bradycardia, dizziness, and confusion.